Hello, I'm Kate Ward, and today we're going to have a bit of fun by creating surreal animals. You might be familiar with this artist, Salvador Dali, who was known for his surrealist artworks. Like this one here, a telephone with a lobster for its handle. The reason it's surreal is because he's taking everyday objects and putting them together in such a way that makes them unusual. He also painted images inspired by his dreams and also created some rather surreal looking animals. And that's what's inspired today's art lesson. We're going to have a go at making our own surreal animals by choosing bits and pieces from magazines and putting them together in such a way that we make our own unusual and surreal animals. So let's switch camera angles and I'll show you how to begin. So these are some of the things that we're going to need to work with today when we create our surreal animals. Scissors, some glue, a pencil, some sharpies of different thicknesses. So I've got a thickish one and a thinnish one just to get different lines, but these are optional. Some construction paper, various colours. Again, this is optional. You can use whatever you have at home. And then this is the best bit here. You can tell they're well loved. Our piles of magazines full of lots of great things. So the first thing we want to do is start by looking through our magazines and looking for some images that will relate to our surreal animals. So thinking about how surreal animals are created, you want to grab animal looking bits. So I've looked through some magazines and I've pulled out some images that may or may not inspire some kind of surreal animal. So I've chosen this because I really like the background. I thought that might create some kind of interesting background to put our animal on top of. And then I've just collected some stuff that may inspire some creativity. So say, for example, this head here might be quite interesting. So what I'm going to do is start cutting out these bits and pieces so that I can start playing with my collage and really start to get a sense of what my surrealist creature might look like. So this is one here. I thought this was quite an interesting face. So perhaps this face could become part of a surrealist animal. We've got a sheep here, or a goat I should say, and maybe even our goat as a bird head, for example. Now that could be quite interesting. And then I really like this hat. This hat to me could be quite an interesting thing to add on top of our surrealist animal's head. Put that there. So we've got ourselves some images that we can start playing with now. So we've got our sheep, goat here. There we go, look at that. So I've got a goat and perhaps we put a bird's head on our sheep. Do you think maybe it should have a hat? Maybe that hat might be a bit too big. Maybe that man can wear a hat. Let's see now. Actually, look at this, the way that's just naturally happened like that with the tree coming out of his head. I think that's working really well. So we might keep that like that. So once we've finished playing around with all our different components and what we think is going to make a really surreal image, 
we can then look at what kind of paper we want to put it on. So I'm choosing colors that will really make the image stand out. So this green is really going to make this image here stand out. And it's also something that's slightly a little bit unusual because this is a spaceship and it's on a dark sky, I want to maybe put it in something like a nice green forest. So just kind of thinking about things that don't really go together, something that you might see or imagine in a dream. So we've got our head and our eye here, and then we're going to, I'm going to cut around this. There we have it, a uh, machine-like creature. So now that we've decided how we want it to look, we can glue it down. So that's where we get our glue. And I like to do my gluing on a just a spare sheet of paper, turn it around, put the glue everywhere. The reason I like to do this on a spare piece of paper, it means I can get right up to the edges so that it gets a nice good layer of glue everywhere. And then when I come to stick it back down here and place this down very carefully, and it means that it's going to stick on all areas. So I'll do that again for the other two parts. There we go. So there's our surreal creature number one. Now, I think with this one, we need to give some thought to uh, what kind of background we think we would like it to be in. So I think I would like this one to be in a in a forest, I think. So we'll put this on some ground using our pencil. This just helps us figure out where we want it to be. And then once we've drawn everything in pencil, then we can come back in and go over it with the Sharpie. So we might do some big looking leaves to match this rather surreal and alien looking creature. Same on this side as well. You can draw some imaginary plants. And then once we're happy with our sketch, we can then come back in with a Sharpie or some different coloured pens or pencils. And we might want to do some tufts of grass on the bottom of our picture. And maybe even connect like that. So there we have, that's one surreal picture. You could probably even add in some more bits and pieces if you wanted to, like a bit of a wing, for example. There we go, just like that. So that's one of the animals that I created. Let's have a look at what else I discovered. So remember our goat? I found some interesting things. 
So we've got the bird head that we're going to connect on that. And then I thought, well, instead of having it connected like this, let's make it an elongated goat. So, or animal, because it's kind of changing, isn't it? And we're going to put this here as its wings. So what I'm going to do first is cut around the silhouette of the goat. And we're going to fit this little bit of the butterfly wing in there like this. So I'm looking to line up these lines here so that we have a nice continuous line. And if we have a look, just cut that off along there so that it's that little bit looks like it's touching on the tummy. And then lastly, we need a little bit of green just in here to kind of tie this together. So that's where I think I'm going to use some of this frog. And we're going to very carefully start gluing. So first of First off, I'm going to glue this little bit of grass down. So I'm taking care to put this underneath where I want the overlapping goat to go. Make sure you press down all of the bits so it sticks nicely. Then we will come in and do the back bit of the goat. And then the front bit. And then lastly, the bird head. And when I'm doing this, I'm looking to line up the two bits where the shoulders of the bird meet the, the lines or the silhouette of the goat. And there we have our surrealist animal number two. Now with this one, what I'm thinking I will do is, because we've got a black background in here, I'm also going to colour this in black too, just to help tie this one together. And then finally, uh, the last one that we have is our interesting, he's turned into a butterfly man. Here he has butterfly wings or and a crown of sticks, or it could almost be like antlers. And then on this other side, I want to recreate the same kind of butterfly shape. So what I'm going to do is I've got some paper that kind of looks like it could be a butterfly wing and I'm going to trace the shape. So I'm going to get my butterfly wing thing shape here, I'm going to tra very carefully trace it over. So you'll notice that I, to get the reverse shape, I flip it over. So what this means, what I'm doing here, is sometimes you can't quite find what you're looking for. And so just by cutting out some shapes using coloured paper, you can recreate the idea of what you're looking for. So I couldn't find butterfly wings, so I made my own. There we go. So that's our butterfly there. And it's going to sit like this on the picture. And I feel like it might need to have a yellow tail or something like that. So I've got my construction paper here and I'm holding this up to see what kind of colours I would like it. I think would look 
good with this particular picture. And I am feeling that maybe pink might work. Pink or orange? Let's have a look. So the reason why I chose, thought orange could work, is because there's orange in the man's turban. And orange always looks really good against blue. So after cutting out all the bits and pieces, I decided that it did need an extra body. And then I decided to add a lot of little millipede legs as well. And this is how the other two turned out. I had a lot of fun creating them, and I hope you have fun too.